Today, we're going to talk about paper chromatography, which is a method of separating and identifying the components of a mixture by passing a mobile phase through a stationary phase. For our purposes, we will be testing the colors in known and unknown food dyes by passing sodium chloride solution through chromatography paper. We are completing this lab with two goals in mind. First, we want to observe how the components of the dyes will travel different distances, indicating differences in solubility and polarity. Then we will use this information in the dye patterns observed in the testing of the known dyes to identify the mixtures of unknowns. Our lab is based on the major concept that the solutes that are more soluble in the sodium chloride solvent will travel farther on the chromatogram. That is, if we remember the polarity rule that like dissolves like, we can say that the very polar solvent will more easily retain a very polar solute for a farther distance. That is why we can calculate what is called a retention factor for each color component. After measuring the distance the component traveled and the distance the solvent traveled, we can use this equation to compare the different components. But we can come back to calculations later. For now, let's get started. Obtain two pieces of chromatography paper and draw a line two centimeters from the bottom on each. Be sure to use a pencil as pen will run during the experiment. Measure two points that are about three centimeters away from each other on each paper. Label each mark as one of the known four dyes. Then get a spot plate with one drop of each dye. Make a small dot of each dye at its respective point. Let dry, then repeat two more times, placing the dots directly on top of each other. A total of three drops should be applied per dye. Obtain two beakers and add 50 milliliters of 0.1 molar sodium chloride to each. Take the chromatogram papers with the dye and suspend each in a beaker so that the dots are still above the solution. Wait and observe how the colors spread as the solvent front travels. Watch and pull the chromatography paper out of the solution once the solvent front nears the top. Normally, we would have rolled the chromatography paper and put it in a smaller beaker that would then be covered with parafilm, but we left this one open for video purposes. When they are done, remove the chromatograms from the beaker. Mark where the solvent front ends because it will be impossible to see once it dries. Mark where each color component ends as well, then lay out to dry. Repeat these steps, but this time with the three unknown mixtures rather than the four known dyes. Then, for all of the tests, both known and unknown, Record the distances of each color component and the solvent fronts from the 2 centimeter lines drawn earlier. Great, now we can use this data in our formula, RF equals distance of dye over distance of solvent, to calculate the retention factor for each component in both the knowns and unknowns. Now match the color combinations and compare the RF values for the components to identify which dyes are present in each of the three unknowns. Based on our findings, we'd say that unknown number one is a combination of the red and blue dye, unknown number two is red and yellow, and unknown number three is red and green. Now look at the first unknown. Our paper shows that there are three spots of color present. The RF value of the red is 0.91, the blue is 1.0, and the pink is 0.26. Now, if we compare these calculations to those of our known solutions, there are clear similarities, helping us to identify our unknowns. A red solute only appeared in the red dye and had an RF value of 0.84, close to that of the unknown's red substance. In the known blue dye, the blue spot had an RF value of 0.96. The blue dye also had a pink solute with an RF value identical to that of the unknown. By comparing these numbers, it can be concluded that the dyes in the unknown were the red and the blue. The same process was used to determine the other two unknowns. Of course, there's always room for error. As mentioned before, our experiment should have been in a sealed container to let the solution vapors contribute as well. Since this did not happen, the solvent and solutes may not have traveled as far as they could have. In addition, other common errors include making the spots of dye too large, causing them to run improperly, possibly mixing and ruining the chromatogram. Also, if allowed to run too long, the solvent front could potentially run off the paper and produce falsely high RF values because we can't know if it traveled much distance beyond the end of the paper. And that's paper chromatography. Hopefully this helped you review concepts of solubility and helpful separation techniques, as well as comparing both quantitative and qualitative data to determine the unknowns. Thanks for watching.